good morning. I did not shit the bed last night. I got up and then I kind of had to go to the bathroom and then, I don't know. It still feels like the laxative didn't do as much as it could have. And I had some wrist pain as well. It made me kind of be like, fuck. Fuck. And I felt kind of lethargic, but I did shave my face, and when I shaved my face, I was like, alright. That feels good. I like when I have a, like, a shaved face. But, I don't have anything to say, I'm just like here. I'm just like waking up, I have nothing to do, I'm here. I thought I'd just sit here and almost just breathe and think and just like stream, I don't know. Nothing too exciting. Yeah, we got the emotes. The emotes are all ready to go, by the way. So everyone, who, everyone who's subscribed, we have four emotes. They're very good. And there's four more that well, there's four more slots that I could use currently. But I don't have ideas though, so... I don't know. It's a very mimetic, powerful emote. I'm really happy the girl pills are approved. I feel like it has relevance. Yeah. Something. There's no plan today. I thought maybe we could keep watching MST speedruns from 2011, but because I'm still like adjusting to like my digestive issue, I didn't want to just like jump into it right away. I was sort of just like, I want to go live and see how I feel kind of, and just sort of just like go from there. There's a code for the emotes, but you have to be a subscriber. It's a speedrun category that ZFG and I kind of made up. <laughs> it was based on an older category that Kazooie ran in like 2006. Something like that, 2006. rock rate of time.
I think if we're gonna watch the MST runs, I'm actually gonna end the stream and start it up again when it's all set up or something, but we could do that later maybe. I'm just gonna chill for now. My sleeping schedule just sort of brought this stream into existence at this hour. Although something I noticed though, I was actually thinking about this, like I go to check who's streaming at like this hour and like no one I care about is streaming at this hour. So it's almost like this open time where like no one relevant is streaming. And it made me almost wonder if it'd be good for me to stream during this time because during other times, there's like other streamers that are like streamers that I'd want to watch that are like live. But for Breath of the Wild, I'm not sure what my plan is. Regarding like schedule. Um, I don't plan on playing Ocarina of Time, but we could watch, there's like three more runs of it that I want to watch at some point in the near future. We could probably do one or more of them today. Yeah, I know. Although, I think if you stream around now, it's not that bad for like Europeans. And I think generally I've had pretty good audience from Europe. Although maybe that was just in the past though, but I don't know. I don't want to generalize like that. So it's just like whatever, but it just seems like streaming now is not a terrible idea. Zora dude, are you talking to Maki man? I don't yet know what I'm doing with Breath of the Wild, because I want to understand what the game is before deciding kind of what I want to pursue within it. I think speedrunning is likely, but not necessarily guaranteed.
I haven't made a Mario Maker level in a while. <laughs> it's been a while. Mm. I suppose once March happens, I'm gonna like stop playing my Wii U. The Switch is gonna be plugged in all the time. And I'm just gonna be playing Zelda. So, there's not much time left to make Mario levels. I might be done with it, honestly, but... Maybe I should try to make one final level. One final ridiculous labyrinth. Am I gonna get arms? Oh, 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 man, I sung that so horribly. I like the main theme from arms. I don't think I'm gonna buy the game. Espe well, definitely not at launch. I just like the theme music. The theme music is good. That's an interesting point. <laughs> Maybe arms wouldn't be too bad for my hands. Can I beat all my Mario Maker levels? Yes, I can. My digestive system just did something. I have Twitch Deck on my second monitor. Tweet Deck is very powerful because it allows you to see 
Okay, you follow a ton of people on Twitter, and then you get to see everything that they like. So, like, everything that they click the little heart symbol for, it appears in a feed, and I can just, like, be witness to what everyone likes. And it's just scrolling in real time, and I don't have to refresh or anything. I'm just literally just, like, absorbing information just by, like, sitting here. It's also a really good method of uh, discovery. And sometimes people are more personal with their likes than they are about their tweets. So you can sort of, like, get a better insight on the person that you're following. Sometimes there's hentai. Actually, I saw one hentai image already. <laughs> it's just things that people like, you know? I mean, unless you're on TweetDeck, the likes are not as public. Because otherwise you have to go looking for them. I mean, you can always go looking for them, though. You can just go on someone's profile and see what they like. But I have, like, a timeline of likes. It's called the activity feed and I can just see all of it. Uh, I think I saw, like, one of those Zora dude. My job is to exist. <laughs> I know. Well, I tried to look good today because yesterday I was like coming off of being awake for super long and just like. Um, I almost want to see if I have to go to the bathroom. Actually, well, I don't know if I do, but. My stomach was making some noises earlier, and I could feel stuff moving around, and I still feel, like, bloated. The worst feeling ever, though, is when you're, like, so bloated, but you're hungry. You're hungry, and it's like you want to eat some food, but then you do it, and then it's like, I don't know. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm rested now. I'm rested. I kind of want to try to go into the bathroom.
so it's like I think the laxatives are still kind of slowly working but I'm still I still need to like go but I can't I don't know I could take more I feel like I've taken so many laxatives in the last like couple like week and a half or something I have more of this like laxative that I can pour into like some water or something and just drink it but um yeah I don't know oh 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 oh. Oh 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 oh. I mean, the powerful laxative. I I hate talking about this. It worked though. It's like total liquid, liquefied stool. It's like, disgusting, but um, I don't, it feels like I'm still, like, backed up, I don't know, and, like, I don't know, like, what the fuck's wrong with me? Oh, okay, so here's something I want to say. Okay, so here's the thing. This is probably not the advice most people would, like, give to me. This is probably the opposite of what a lot of people would tell me to do, but I don't care. I've decided temporarily to switch to 100% soylent as my food intake and see if my digestive system has a lot of problems with that or if it's like better. I want to I want to know I want to like isolate the problem. And so I'm going to be having 100% soylent until I notice more problems occur and kind of see what that's like and if, then if that's bad then I'm gonna heavily reduce my soylent intake and see what that's like and I'm not really sure what the problem is but um this is irritating it's really irritating who's Jordan Peterson I feel my digestive system doing stuff again. <laughs> Zor dude, I don't know what you're trying to like sell me though. Like, I don't know what you're trying to say at all. I have digestive issues, deadly spiders. And I'm trying to get over my problems. And this is one of the problems that scares me, because it can be sometimes very painful. It's so painful. Right, but that's just your personal association. It'd probably be similar, Todd. Look, if I end up... What happens if I'm on 100% soil and then my digestive system just, like, is totally messed up? Isn't that, like, an alarm bell for this company? Like, isn't that, like... I don't know. I'm just... I just want to see what's going to happen. I want to see if things will even out or if, like, things will get worse. I want to know. Does it taste good? It doesn't taste as good as, like, um, steak and pizza and french fries and burgers. 
you know what I mean? <laughs> it tastes worse than those things, but it tastes fine. It tastes fine. It's not super cheap. It's priced at some rate. I do it for convenient pur convenience purposes because it's supposed to have optimal nutrition and also be incredibly quick and easy to utilize. I can't describe the flavor, really. So that's my new experiment. I'm going to go 100% soylent and water. Um, I'm not sure, Lyle. I'm actually not sure. I think, actually, well, I don't know. How long is this diet plan for? It's a good question. I don't know. I just, I'm just going to try it for like a while and see what happens. Mess up my jaw because I'm not chewing. I could buy gum. Could buy some gum. I'm just frustrated because there's people here. Look, let's look this up. Look at this. All right. October 2016. Okay. Blood test results 100% Soylent 2.0 for one year. A little background I'm 69 years old, 5'9, 160 pounds have coronary heart disease, chronic kidney disease, high blood pressure, anxiety disorder, and mild emphysema. All conditions are monitored under control. Walk slash jog two miles per day. After a year on 2.0, my blood test results were all within normal ranges except for sodium and chlorine. Doctor asked about water intake and it was determined that I drank way too much water. 100 plus ounces per day, including four bottles of 2.0. I reduce I reduce my intake to four bottles of 2.0 per day and 24 ounces of water per day. And a follow-up test showed sodium and chlorine levels normal. Cholesterol levels were 40 HDL and 61 LDL. Kidney function improved 25% from last test. I don't know. It's just like, there's people who are like, have health problems and stuff, and they're like, they're older, and they're on 100% Soylent 2.0 for a whole year, and they're like, total normal health results. Like, it's fucking, like, why is my digestive system, like, messed up, you know what I mean?
On 100% soil in for a year, craving salt, eating pure salt all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I think I might be low on salt as well. Yeah, I know. Well, I just want to know if Soylent is like causing my problems. I have time to prepare food, but I kind of just don't. And I really do like the convenience of the drink. And I hope that it's not the thing that's causing me problems because I would like to continue. Um, the nurse was like, kind of suggesting that I change my diet, but she just called it like, yeah, these protein drinks. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. She just didn't even know what it was. Like she had never heard of it. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm just gonna, so the plan for now is 100% Soylent. If that doesn't work out, I'll heavily reduce the Soylent intake or just remove it entirely and see what happens on a totally different diet. I just wanna know what's causing my digestive problems. I'm fine with being the guinea pig because like what if there is something wrong like I'm noticing issues like what if there is something wrong I'll be the fucking guinea pig I'll do it I'm doing it what if I do permanent damage if I get really bad pain, I'm gonna change what I do. Also, the doctor did say that, like, my problem is not life-threatening. I hope the doctor is correct about that. Okay, what's in Soylent's? All right, nutrition facts, one serving per container, serving size, one bottle, 414 milliliters, amount per serving, calories, 400, percent daily value, total fat, 21 grams, 32%, saturated fat, 2 grams, 10%, polyunsaturated fat, 
2.5 grams, monounsaturated fat, 16 grams, trans fat, 0 grams, cholesterol, 0 milligrams, sodium, 300 milligrams, 13%. Total carbohydrate, 36 grams, 12%. Dietary fiber, 3 grams, 12%. Soluble fiber, 1 gram. Total sugars, 9 grams. Includes 9 grams added sugars, 18%. Protein, 20 grams. Vitamin D, 2 mil... What is that? Millicentigrams? I don't know. MCG, 2 MCG, 20%. Okay, so vitamin D, 20% daily. Iron... 20%, vitamin A, 20%, vitamin K, 20%, riboflavin, 20%, vitamin B6, 20%, vitamin B12, 20%, uh, choline, <laughs> Co choline, what is that, 20%, iodine 20%, zinc 20%, copper 20%, chromium 20%, pantothenic acid 20%, calcium 20%, potassium 20%, vitamin C 20%, vitamin E 20%, thiamine 20%, niacin 20%, folic acid 20%, biotin 20%, magnesium 20%, selenium 20%, manganese 20%, moly Denim, 20%. Uh, it contains soy. And yeah, it, it's like 20% of all the all this shit. 20% of daily recommended per bottle. Yeah, 20% of your daily intake per bottle for all of those things. Those figures, well, yeah, I could try to find out more information about where those figures are based, like what the figures are based off of. Uh, Soylent 2.0, we're happy to introduce Soylent 2.0, ready to drink Soylent package, 400 calories, single serving bottles, new version, pasteurized, will remain fresh for up to one year, even without refrigeration. Our glycemic index testing indicates that Soylent 2.0 is designated as low GI, GI equals 49, the macronutrient breakdown is 47% fats, 33% carbohydrates, and 20% protein. The vitamins and minerals in this formulation are designed to provide 100% daily values over 2,000 calories or 5 bottles. Algal oil, high oleic. This algal oil is composed of monounsaturated fat. X is a replacement for sunflower oil with minimal taste and less environmental impact. Soy protein isolate. We have transitioned to soy protein isolate in Soylent 2.0. The benefits include higher PDCAAS score, improved digestibility, and better amino acid profile, smoother texture, and a level of purity from inorganic compounds not possible with other plant proteins. Isomol 2 ligosacride. This new ingredient is a soluble prebiotic fiber composed of short chains of partially digestible carbohydrates. Supports the growth of beneficial gut bacteria and promote a gut environment that resists colonization by harmful microorganisms. It produces the fewest gastrointestinal side effects of all common prebiotic fibers. Oat fiber. Oat fiber serves as an insoluble fiber with smooth, smooth texture and mouthfeel. Gallon gum. This is a bacterial derived polysaccharide, saturide, I can't pronounce anything, that produces excellent suspension of the solids in Soylent 2.0. I don't know.
Yeah, it does say that. Well, not intended to replace every meal. I think the reason they're... Re well, I don't know. Maybe they are afraid of, like, getting sued or something. So they put something like that. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Vegan, animal free. This version of Soylent has no animal products or byproducts. Lactose free. This version of Soylent does not contain lactose or milk products. Nut free. This version of Soylent does not contain nuts. Follows FDA guidelines. Soylent is made using ingredients that you probably already have in your kitchen. Quality manufacturing. We use a good manufacture. We use a good manufacturing practices GMP certified facility. Made in the USA. We are proud to support American manufacturing. Organic. No, this version of Soylent is not 100% organic. Um. Yeah. I don't know. Oh yeah, they use a, it's not GMO free as well. And they do that on purpose. They're like proudly made with the GMOs. As a society, blah, blah, blah. Genetic engineering, yeah. I'm totally cool with genetically modified like food production stuff. It's cool with me, I'm very cool with it. I love, I love everything about this fucking product. <laughs> Please don't tell me it's the cause for my digestive problems. It'd be sad. What if it is? What if it is? See, I just get like trapped in gas and stool apparently. Like stool and gas gets just trapped in my digestive system and then it causes pain sometimes, bloating and pain. It just like, I have trouble digesting, like, I don't know. Every time I go to the doctor, they're just like, try these over-the-counter laxatives and then I try them and it kind of helps a little maybe, but then the pain comes back later and I get backed up again or whatever, and then I go to the doctor again, and they're like, try these other over-the-counter laxatives. And I'm just like, well, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck is going on? Lack of exercise. Do you think it could have to do with my sitting position? Because oftentimes when I sit down, I'm not as like, I'm not as upright and like good as I am now. Oftentimes when I sit, I'm like this. I'm like freaking like this or something. And like maybe I'm like twisting my digestive system or something. I don't know. Um, also, yeah, exercise. I try to get exercise, but it's probably, I probably need more than I get. Like I probably need more. I feel like I'm in this chair so much. I feel like I'm in this chair all the time, and I feel like it's happening now, it's like it's starting, I feel like I'm starting to get like backed up again or something, I don't know, this is ridiculous. <sighs> do you think it could be sitting, sitting too much? Do I need to stand more? Do I need to walk more? I notice when it hurts, sometimes it feels better just to like walk, but um, I don't know. Senna, okay, so you say Senna. I have, wait, where are they? God damn, I don't want to be in Discord audio right now, sorry. Uh, where are they? Oh. I have Senna tablets. And I feel like relying on this is like dangerous if I do it too much. Isn't it like bad to do that? It's all about the fiber. Well, we just looked it up. Soil and contains fiber, but also I've been trying. I've been having um, almonds. 
almonds have fiber and also oh shit i dropped them whatever um i also have uh metamucil or whatever that i can utilize Another thing, too, is that, like, I think stress-related digestive problems are, like, not unheard of, and I've been under a lot of stress. <sighs> I just want to not have the pain, you know? I don't want the pain. I feel bloated right now. Like, I feel like my gut is really fat. I got this f big belly, and I feel like I'm already bloated. I'm, like, afraid to eat anymore. Like, what if I get hungry later? Am I supposed to just, like... I feel like eventually it gets to a point where the pain starts coming, and the pain is so bad. Oh, my God, I hate the pain. This pain's not some joke, it's like serious, sharp pain, it's like ridiculously painful. And it only lasts like a half a second, a pop, but it, it happens like, it gets me, and then it gets me, and then like, later, it gets me again, and it's like so terrifying, I feel like something's gonna burst, it feels like there's so much pressure. How am I? I'm stressed out about my digestive problems. My hair over, why is this? The hair over here is like still wet. And the hair here, it's all drying and it looks beautiful. Look at my hair, it's so beautiful. Holy fuck. Look at my beautiful hair. It's a little messy back here. A little messy. My hair is so pretty, holy fuck. I feel clogged. I guess I should take a Senna tablet, right? Or is it a mistake to have too many laxatives? Should I just try to get through it without the laxative? I just feel my, I feel, I feel like I'm like clogged still, even with that crazy laxative I took last night, or la yesterday, I took it yesterday. That's hilarious, Zora dude. I find that highly amusing. I could have another glass of water, probably. Wait, how many glasses of water per day? Eight, right? 
eight glasses of water per day. I think lately I've been having like one or two and that's probably a problem. Give it some time. I will probably have the water. I might take one Senna tablet, maybe. I've come to the conclusion that the color choice for my logo clashes kind of badly with the color of my room. Uh, so I might change the colors of it to look better on the stream. Oh, it is a tall glass. Okay. Yeah, that's true. When I shaved today, I felt a lot better. Okay, technically speaking, I could paint the walls. As long as I painted them back when I move out. And I don't, I don't want to move out. I want to just live here. So... It's possible for me to paint the walls. <laughs> I just, I don't know if I'd want to do that. <laughs> Um, my sexual orientation is not exclusively girls. Actually, if you give me four from Patreon, I get more percentage of it. It feels like this is how it works. It's like I get bloated and then I'll belch a little bit and I'll like sometimes pass gas, but a lot of it is just stuck. It just gets stuck within me. <laughs> Why am I like this? What's wrong with me? Is my shirt inside out? I can't tell. Maybe not. I don't know. It's probably because I sit too much. I should stand up. <laughs> All right, we're standing now. I don't like this angle, though. This angle? I don't know. do squats
Should I just get up every hour? <laughs> every hour, just get up. My hair's a bit fucked up. I kind of left some conditioner in it. <sighs> My hair is so fucked up, no. No. <laughs> It's just like too much conditioner is still in my hair. I should just do that every like 30 minutes. Yeah, I know, my shirt could be ironed. I don't feel silly doing squats though. I don't think it's silly. Uh, I think the march is cool. I don't know what's gonna happen with President Trump. It feels like tech companies have become more powerful than the government. So it's like, okay. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh, that helped a bit, actually. My poor hair. No, I didn't poop the bed. I just slept through and woke up and everything was fine. Not 100% fine, but whatever. All right, later, dang it. <laughs> kind words from a regular Salmon Tolki troll.
Oh, really? Cynicism. Which, like, what happens? Do you have stories? That sounds fucking hilarious. <sighs> hey, Diego, hi. You should do it, Shift. And you should subscribe to me. <laughs> then you'll be one of the few who believed in me. And once Breath of the Wild... Look at my emotes, they're good. Look at my emotes. <laughs> That's funny, Synarchism. Yeah, strategic use of my emotes. Try to be intelligent with how you use them. Does does it take the smallest version of the emote and then blow it up for my display? Yeah, Sarkar, it's kind of silly. It's pretty silly, actually. That's actually pretty good, to, uh, Todd. <laughs> the Mario Maker spike. That's pretty good. Yeah, Sarkai, it's true. It's not a lie, you're correct about that.
Okay, everyone, it's time to listen to Obama's last interview. The presenting sponsor of Pod Save America is Movement Watches. Movement was founded on the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. Starting at just $95, these watches offer classic design, quality construction, and a minimalistic style. With over 500,000 watches sold to customers in over 160 countries around the world, Movement Watches has solidified itself as the world's fastest growing watch company. Step up your watch game and visit movementwatches.com to enjoy free shipping and free returns on your new watch. Listeners of this show can get 15% off today when you go to mvmtwatches.com slash crooked. That's mvmtwatches.com slash crooked. My last <laughs> official interview as president of the United States. <laughs> All right, so I've been briefed. You've been briefed? <laughs> was it an intense briefing? It was. <laughs> You've been told what this goat rodeo is about? <laughs> All right, let's do this. Okay, welcome to Pod Save America. We are here today <laughs> in the Roosevelt Room at the White House with President Barack Obama on his... His last interview as President of the United States. Mr. President, thank you for joining us. It is wonderful to be with you guys. Let me preface this by saying, I cannot believe that people actually listen to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> nor, uh, nor can we. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's shocking. But, but, you know, it should give everybody out there hope that they can do something with their lives. Uh, you too can be a podcast host. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Land opportunity, baby. Is this the most ridiculous thing you've done? Uh, no, as you, well, as, as, as you well know, <laughs> Axis podcast was mainly because he took his more seriously. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, what do you got? All right, okay, come so, on, let, let's keep this thing moving. If you could go back in time and talk to 2009 Obama on his first day in office, mm -hmm. what piece of advice would you give him right before he walks into the Oval Office? You know, I, I would tell him that... You have to spend more time thinking about new ways of communicating with the American people. You can't be so intimidated by the way things have been done in the White House because the communications landscape is shifting. And you know, when when you think about you know the dilemmas that we were confronting, right? The economy is collapsing. We're still in two wars. I'm always surprised and, and gratified about how we got, I think, basic policy right. Mm -hmm. And that was mainly because we just had a lot of really smart people around working really hard and uh, had a good process. But, you know, Lincoln said, with public opinion, there's nothing you can't do. And, you know, without it, there's not much you can do. And we were going to get clobbered in 2010, probably no matter what we did, just because on my watch, people were really hurting. But I think that I, I might have said to 2009 Obama, think about how you got here and spend that same amount of effort and energy touching people directly as opposed to standing behind a podium and you know, giving a bunch of grim you know, <laughs> lectures. Just some grim speeches. <laughs> they were. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, and, and remember, people got, I think that's where the impression arose that... Uh, now, Obama's really, you know, Spock-like. Because <laughs> yeah, I was talking about, well, today we lost 800,000 jobs, but here's what we're going to do. It was hard to seem cheerful and The Recovery light. Act is divided the into three parts. <laughs> <laughs> hard, to be, hard to be a man of the people in the different... <laughs> yeah, the, the Recovery Act. <laughs> we always said as speechwriters, we're going to have that on our gravestone. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but, you know, I, th I think that... The other thing I, I, I would have probably told myself is to make sure that the team is supported and encouraged and you're paying a lot of attention to process. You know, I, I think we ended up being good later. We got, I got better and uh, I think the whole team got better. But, you know, in those early days, I think you don't appreciate how much just making sure that everybody is communicating well together internally and looking out for each other, and you know, so there were there were some uh, there were some messy meetings, you know. That, uh, that I don't recall that at that, all. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that kind of wore people out. 
So you just finished your final press conference. Right. Was it fun? It was, actually. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I always enjoyed mm-hmm. press conferences. I, I, you guys who That's, were watching them and had to <laughs> prep me and then clean up afterwards may have not always yeah. enjoyed them, but, but I did. And I, I was impressed mm-hmm. that there were no six-part questions. There were just... Five-part? <laughs> you know, no, I think two-part was, yeah. was the most we got. Uh, mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, I don't know whether that was... You know, just a sort of farewell bouquet to me. <laughs> but, easy. Yeah, it's like, oh, I didn't have to write any of the questions down. We wanted to make the real news here. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Is you, you know, you've talked a lot, particularly in your speech in Chicago, about the impact of people living in bubbles, mm-hmm. right? How do you think in this sort of polarized media environment, with full self-awareness that you're talking to a progressive media startup, uh, yes. how do you think people can get out of those bubbles in this sort of polarized media world? I'm going to spend a lot of time thinking about this. I, I don't have uh, clean answers to it. Some of it is just technology driven. If you have a phone and you are able to visit everything on the web with a touch of a button, you are going to get into certain habits. And yeah, you, know, you can lecture people about, you know, go to the site that makes your blood boil, with you, which you completely disagree, but it's, it's hard to do. Um, I don't think you're going to get a huge amount of take up. And I think that it's unrealistic to expect that people are just going to put their phones away and, you know, spend all their time listening to NPR uh, or, or, you know, other media that I might think is more balanced and more accurate. On the other hand, my, my instinct is everybody hates media right now. Everybody knows that the political culture doesn't work. So that has to be an opportunity, right? I, th- there's got to be a way in which we can create sort of a virtual public square that mm-hmm. feels better for people. My suspicion is that, particularly after this el- last election, there's a, a sizable, maybe still silent majority that just is tired of being mad all the time and would appreciate you know people listening to each other. So... One of the things I'm going to be spending some time thinking about is how, how do you build that civic culture, both in the real world and in the virtual world? Because if we don't, I don't know how we solve problems. We can, each side can win elections. Each side can, in that tug of war, kind of move five yards this way or that way. But tackling big challenges of the sort that I talked about in the speech, you know, tackling inequality, thinking about what are the new economic models that... Uh, we're going to have to come up with. That's going to require building consensus. And we are very far away from doing that right now. Yeah. So you have kept your promise to ensure a smooth transition. I, I've tried to. You, yeah. And, and beyond that, I think it's fair to say you've shown tremendous restraint in not criticizing the president-elect um, on things that aren't just policy differences, but you know, any of his Twitter comments or anything else like right. that. Why did you feel... It was so important to do this. I know it was tradition, and, and Bush did this for you, and, yeah. and you really respect that. It seems like there's a larger principle at stake there for you. Yeah, I, I, I just think that the election was so fraught with anxiety, controversy, anger, yeah. uh, that it was important for everybody to have a cooling off period, and I figured that would have to start with me. It is also my belief and, and you guys have all worked here, so uh, I think you'll appreciate this, that whatever your ideological beliefs, this place has to work <laughs> in order for people to get their Social Security checks and to make sure that veterans are getting care and to make sure that our troops are properly equipped when they go into the war theater. And so whatever differences you have, you, you want to make sure that at least the basic ship of state is functioning. And I think in part because the president-elect may not have anticipated winning or at least didn't have the traditional party establishment behind him, it meant that they were going to have to build up a team pretty quick, which made it that much more important for us to uh, be able to provide them a pretty good blueprint of of just the basic blocking and tackling of running the government. Mm -hmm. Um, So... I know that that didn't always satisfy some of the emotions of folks who were disappointed with the election outcome. Uh, But, you know, I mean, that's my, as you guys know, that's my 
sweet spot. That's my wheelhouse. Which, you know, people not, not being fully satisfied. But, uh, we may uh, given give vent to, uh, to how they're feeling. You've talked a lot since the election about what the Democratic Party should do differently. And you've said, you know, you've got to show up in these small right. towns where these voters went right. from you in 2012 to Trump uh, this past election. When the Democrats show up in those small towns, what do you think they should say to those uh, Trump Obama voters? Well, the, I think the first thing they should say is, what is it that you guys want? I think you start by listening and trying to tease out from people what is it that they're most worried about? What are, what are the stories they're telling themselves about their opportunities and, and their kids' opportunities? And, and if you spend some time listening, then you, you'll learn a lot. And I have my suspicions about what they'll say, which is they feel as if there are cities and power centers uh, around this country that are doing really well, and they feel like nobody's paying attention to them and that things are deteriorating and the way of life and security that they used to feel they had isn't there anymore. And the question then for Democrats is, in addition to a whole bunch of policies that are tried, true, and I continue to believe are important, like raising minimum wage or rebuilding our infrastructure around the country so we can put a bunch of hard hats back to work or making sure that we're investing in our school systems from early childhood education through community colleges and, and, and having lifelong job training. In addition to all that stuff, I do think that the Democratic Party is going to have to maybe be a little bolder in how we describe our economic options going forward. You know, there's been an argument about trade in the Democratic Party, and that's been one of the the few fault lines in what otherwise has been a pretty unified Democratic Party. And I said uh, in my speech in, in Chicago, look, we all want free and fair trade, and you can argue about negotiations with China or take a tougher stance with Mexico or what have you, but the fact is, and the data just shows this, the jobs that are going away are primarily going away because of automation. And that's going to accelerate and driverless Uber and the equivalent displacement that's going to be taking place in office buildings all around the country uh, is going to be scary for folks, which means that we are going to have to start thinking about where do jobs come from and how much government involvement is there in the marketplace and do we have a, a, a job sharing economy that works uh, so that everybody has work because it turns out that works not just about finances, but it's about dignity and feeling like you got a place in the world. And how do you pay for that? And if it, more and more people are working in the service sector, how do we make sure that they are getting paid enough? So in addition to making a, an argument that if you want a better deal, then you better start unionizing and organizing because otherwise you're, you're, you're going to get screwed. In addition to making the argument that if you're in the service sector right now, you know, you should be fighting for a higher minimum wage because across the board, everybody in the service sector is going to be better off. In addition to those traditional arguments, we, ha I think, probably have to be more creative about anticipating uh, what's coming down the pike because automation is relentless and it's going to accelerate. You saw just what happened to retail stores sales this this past Christmas. You know, <laughs> Amazon and Online sales is, is killing traditional retail, and, and what's true there is going to be true throughout our economy. You're listening to Pod Save America. Movement Watches was founded on the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. The watchmaker's goal is to change the way consumers think about fashion by offering high-quality, minimalist products at revolutionary prices. With over 500,000 watches sold to customers in 160 countries around the world, Movement Watches has solidified itself as the world's fastest-growing watch company. We oh, all have some, huh, guys? Yeah, mine's pretty cool. Oh, I wear it often. I don't like things touching my wrist, but I make an exception <laughs> for Movement Watches. Dan, what do you think? I, I love my Movement Watch. It's how we keep time in interviews. Well, you know, if you have any friends who want one, you can get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmtwatches.com slash crooked. Use don't the forget code crooked. slash crooked, people. Get on that crooked business. <laughs> all right, we're doing capitalism here. 
<laughs> the Swatch has a really clean design. It's great. Now's the time to step up your watch game. Go to mvmtwatches.com slash crooked and join the movement. I think it's fair to say that Republicans have, over the last eight years, eroded certain norms, democratic norms. Uh, I'm not just thinking about the last election. I'm thinking about Merrick Garland, the debt confirmation ceiling. Confirmation process. Confirmation process. Right. Do you think that that progressives should follow suit to win more? Or do you think that, you know, it's more important to be the institutionalists and, you know, I'm, I'm trying, in this world where yeah, there's no, so many institutions yeah, breaking down, right. even if we face political setbacks, right. you know, what, what do we do with that? Yeah, I, look, I, I think that it doesn't help the progressive cause to undermine norms that help support a progressive society. <laughs> so... So in that sense, yeah, maybe we're a little bit disadvantaged relative to Mitch McConnell. Um, but I, I, don't, I don't know how we're served with more judicial vacancies. <laughs> I, I don't know how, how well served we are with you know, us trying to suppress voters the way they try to suppress voters in a place like North Carolina. Right. That, that doesn't sound like a good like? solution. But, but in terms of cooperation, in terms of you know, how, how does a Democratic Congress work with President Trump, my suggestion has been that you, you stand your ground and you, where there are areas of agreement, just make sure that you're negotiating tough and negotiating well. I'll, I'll give you a specific example. Trump says that he wants to build infrastructure. Well, I've been, everybody around this table knows <laughs> that I've been on my infrastructure you know, advocacy uh, since I came into office. So that should be an area where our interests meet. But how you pay for it is really important. And if President-elect Trump or you know, the Republican Congress tell you, you know what, right now deficits don't matter. Let's just go ahead and finance a big infrastructure boom. It's important for Democrats to anticipate that two years later, they'll suddenly come back and say, you know what, we all voted for this infrastructure. Now the deficits are terrible. Deficits count again. And this is why we need to cut Medicaid. So I think you look for ways to cooperate uh, where you can. But I think you do, don't play the sucker. Make sure that that cooperation does not uh, carry such a high price that it undermines uh, some other key things that you care about. And I think where we, Democrats should be pretty hard-nosed is around s some of the basic institutional and structural you know, systems like voting and keeping politics out of the criminal justice system. Uh, that you know, if, if we lose on that front, then the democratic process doesn't work. Then people don't have the chance to say, you know what, we tried this thing now, we want something else to, to replace it because lo and behold, uh, you know, power has further entrenched some of these structural advantages. You've said one of the things that you're going to do when you walk out of here is begin thinking about your memoirs. Um, you know, you are a writer first and were a writer before you were a politician. Have you thought about how your memoirs might be different than the traditional presidential memoir? Uh, yeah, I've, I've given that some thought. Look, I, I, hopefully... Um, people don't just buy the book, but they read it too. <laughs> so that would that would be you, one. You get paid either way. <laughs> either, yeah, but you know what? You you, you kind of want folks to feel like they, they got something out of it. I, I haven't given a lot of thought. I've been too busy. The the one thing that probably is a carryover from the way we wrote speeches, and and a bunch of you guys around here worked on speeches with me. I want to tell a story as opposed to just have. A series of lines, right? And so I, I think the equivalent in a book is if all it is is and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened and it's chronological and it just uh, sort of uh, becomes a, a, a detailed diary, then I'm probably not going to be able to transmit to people what I found has been most interesting about this job uh, and that is the stories of the American people, certain themes that come up again and again, the growth that took place for me and for you guys and a lot of people as you wrestle with 
being an outsider and then suddenly you're on the inside and how change happens and what blocks it. So I think the main thing probably is, is just making sure that uh, whatever I write is a little more thematic, which is good because, you know, I've... I've How's that journal? <laughs> well, that's, that's the point is, is uh, I think partly because the first two years it was just such a fire drill. You know, I just, you know, I'd, I'd be finished by midnight and the idea of sitting there and then trying to write down. Today I met with Mitch McConnell. Exactly. <laughs> or, you know, here, here's what, uh, you know, the Afghan review process was like. Oh boy. Um, you know, I just, I, I, so maybe just as a consequence of not having been like Jimmy Carter and meticulously recorded every single thing that happened to me every day, I'll be forced to write thematically. Uh, a lot of details are lost. That's good. Mr. President, I was lucky enough to, to be a part of this journey on the 2004 Senate race, and I was looking through old pictures the other day, and I saw this, this rinky-dink downstate Illinois tour we'd announced in Chicago, and Sasha was so little, she yeah. was still in the First Lady's arms, and it just... Then I ran into Malia the other day, and she was telling me about a, a, gap, a gap year yeah. in college, and yeah. it just... I couldn't process it. Yeah, I know. How far we've come. And I'm wondering if you've had any time to do that. And if you think that there's an inflection point along the way that was like, that was the moment in hindsight, the 04 convention speech or Iowa. I'm going to name other things where I was uh, attending those events. <laughs> <laughs> what role did Tommy play in your eyes? <laughs> I think it's fair to say that like Zelig, he was, he was there at every inflection point. Um, now, look, uh, you, you guys were there. And, and you remember. Uh, look, t- 2004 gave me a national platform, and, and that was different. Although, for me at least, winning the Democratic primary in that Senate race was the inflection point. Right. Because my bet always was that if I'd won that, and I won that Senate seat, that I would have a platform, and I had some confidence that I'd have a message that potentially resonated. So, in, in terms of the presidency, look, uh, you know, winning Iowa was at the heart of, of everything that happened. Not just the fact that we won, but how we won. Yeah. I continued, and I've said this before, the night of the Iowa caucus was my favorite moment in politics. Mine too. Me too. <laughs> and, it, it, and that was before it was announced that we had won. Yeah. I, and I, I've told this story about just going to the school where, you know, I, I was going to kind of shake some hands as yeah. caucus gores flowed in and it just felt good you could feel it It, 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 not for me it just it felt good to see all these people from all these different walks of life and backgrounds and they were just going to go into a gym or a classroom and they were just going to make an argument about why their candidate was best and why these issues were important. And you, you could just feel th- this spirit. And you said, this is how this thing's supposed to work, right? At its best. And, and it rarely does. Mm-hmm. But this, this is that thing that started, you know, two and a half centuries ago. And if you could duplicate that night and that moment across the country and around the world, you just feel, you felt at that time that there wasn't a problem we couldn't solve. Yeah. 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 I was in a half empty gym with an old man playing accordion working for Hillary and it felt, <laughs> felt, felt different. Hey, you didn't have that same feeling. <laughs> just slightly different. Slightly different. <laughs> You're listening to Pod Save America. I just happened to be sitting here at a table with a bunch of guys starting a media company. And it's like, where do we go to find people to fill these many, many jobs that are growing concern? Have you heard of ZipRecruiter? <laughs> with ZipRecruiter.com, you can post your job to 200 plus job sites, including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, all with a single click. How could that be possible? <laughs> you can find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. Just post once and watch your qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy to use interface. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Quickly screen candidates, rate them, and hire the right person fast. The no emails thing sounds good, guys. Yeah. It does. <laughs> Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by tens of thousands of small and medium-sized businesses and Fortune 500 companies. Anything Pfeiffer? No? Nothing? All right, moving on. And right now... <laughs> I have a job. <laughs> and right now, our listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash crooked. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash crooked. One more time to try it for free, go to ZipRecruiter.com slash crooked. Mm. 
The year is 2011. <laughs> yes. So we work on the correspondence dinner. Talking right. about microphone. You are focused on the Bin Laden raid. Right. We are writing jokes. Uh, we write a rant about uh, an apprentice host. It's the funniest speech a president's ever given at the correspondence dinner. May have also caused him to run. Are we responsible? Uh, how should we feel about that? You know, I, I, the, uh, I, 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 look, that, it was a funny night. And, and John, you, you know, you did a great job. But, but, but That's all he was I, I, mean, I mean, I do notice a certain theme, which is, is that, you know, everybody's questions seem to be centered on... Uh, yeah, we're journalists their, 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 their moment in the sun. I think we give ourselves too much credit to say that, you know, that's why Trump won. Uh, you know, he, he had churned up that whole birther thing uh, well before that night, which is part of the reason why it was funny. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, and he's he's a very effective marketer and uh, grabs attention as well as anybody uh, in our culture. So, so cl- clearly he had his sights on something, and. You know, what I, what I remember about that night, uh, more than anything else, was uh, the fact that the next day, we were going to be, you know, the very next morning, we were going to be making as big of a decision as I made during my presidency. So it kind of washed away pretty quick. Um, and, you know, what I also remember about that moment is the rapidity with which we went from uh, the Bin Laden raid and folks outside Washington chanting Mm -hmm. USA, one of the magical moments uh, uh, of our time here, to debt ceiling and the economy might be on the verge of collapsing again (laughs) after we had just spent two years trying to yank it out of uh, a great recession. Um, You know, I I think that's uh, one of the lessons, you know, you were asking earlier, John, about what, what I tell myself. I think I was pretty good about this, so I might not, you know, use my limited time travel on, on this piece of <laughs> advice. But, but, but just understanding the Im- enormous ups and downs of this place, and and uh, you know the way in which everything feels like it's going great, and then suddenly uh, you can hit a pothole, and you know you're careening off the side of the road. It, it uh, and being able to maintain some sense of equilibrium through that process, I think uh, it's pretty important. When, was your mo- when were you most scared in the White House? What was your scariest moment? Well, I think it was that moment uh, when John Boehner didn't seem to be able to generate the votes yeah. to make sure that the U.S. didn't uh, default. I remember starting and, drafting the speech. Yeah, we had to start drafting the speech, and we were having these conversations with Jack Lou and others about what options, in fact, were available because it was it had never happened before, and there were all kinds of wacky ideas about how potentially you could coin. you know get, have this massive coin i mean it, which, <laughs> i mean it, 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 it was some like some primitive point, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> some you know it was like out of the stone age or saying you know you're you and I pictured rolling in some coin for for <laughs> those who are listening it it, it gets pretty technical, but there was <laughs> there was this theory that I had the authority to just issue this uh, through the the mint. I could just issue this massive a tr- trillion dollar coin, a trillion dollar commemorative coin, commemorative <laughs> coin, and, and that on that basis we could try to pay off our uh, U.S. Uh, treasuries. And it was a very realistic possibility that uh, we couldn't get the votes for that, and we couldn't get. Uh, those debts rolled over, and we would be in a situation where uh, technically we were in default. And and at that point, you were in uncharted territory. And I, and I remember. And what was also true was that, in addition to talking to Jack Lew, Treasury Secretary, and my speechwriters about a, a speech, you know, there were also questions about whether any actions that I took might be violations of the law. And so we had to be talking to lawyers um, about you know, uh, potential challenges and legal actions and lawsuits from bondholders around the world. and Not fun. It, it, <laughs> it, was, it was my favorite night. Yeah. yeah. But... Uh, what was your favorite night? You know, I've, I, I've, I've said this, and it, 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 it has never stopped being my favorite night. The, the night we passed uh, the Affordable Care Act. 
that was a big piece of business. Yeah. And it was hard and it was tough, but I still remember Axelrod, who, who's a wonderful daughter, uh, has ha had severe epilepsy most of her life, uh, coming up to me and hugging me in tears and, and just reminding me of, of what it, it had been like for him when he was a young reporter and had no idea how he was going to pay the bills for uh, his daughter's treatments and the risks of whatever job he took, whether that stuff was covered or not. And it was very personal for a lot of people. And I think it also was a moment when you saw real courage out of members of Congress. Some of my favorite members of Congress voted for this thing. They lived in the toughest districts. The politics were bad. They ended up losing. Undoubtedly, consultants were telling them that they might lose their seats. They were all pretty new, young guys who were at the start of their careers. And they said, you know what, this is why I'm here. And uh, it, was, uh, it was similar to that Iowa night in the sense that it vindicated a certain kind of politics and public service and why you get into this stuff. Who do you see out there in the Democratic Party today as a rising star that sort of has that sense of principle and courage that you see coming up? The new generation. You know, I, I think there's a, a bunch of folks who are doing really interesting stuff. Um, my guy in Missouri, Kander, uh, who, who lost, but seems extraordinarily talented, seems like a sharp guy, and I hope that he uh, gets back on the horse. Uh, you know, I, I remind him and others that uh, I lost my first right. federal race. You have mayors like Garcetti in L.A. or Lander in New Orleans, who I think are really, uh, Kasim Reed in Atlanta, really talented, smart guys who seem to be able to navigate a lot of the ideological nonsense and just stay focused on getting the job done. In Congress, you know, folks like Kamala Harris, who just got elected, people who've been there a while, like Michael Bennett, really good people and really talented and in it for the right reasons. So, and, and then we've got a bunch of guys who used to work with you and are still trying to do something with their lives instead of having podcasts. You, know? <laughs> you got, this you know, is you a got, launching pad for Favreau 2024. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you got, no, you got Michael Blake, you know, yeah, uh, Michael. you know, who's now, I gather running for vice chair of the he DNC is, yeah. and, you know, guys like lesser and, you know, in, in, in Massachusetts in the state Senate. Um, you know, so I just feel like there's a, there's a generation out there that's moving there's a little bit of a gap in some ways you know i came a little i was a little precocious came, showed up a little earlier than maybe expected and so the, some of the talent is uh, a little younger or just getting exposed just getting started but they're coming and that's part of what makes me optimistic this is pod save america there are still tickets left to the inaugural. <laughs> Tons and Trump tons has been trying to give them away. You can sit between three doors down and Mike Pence, it's only <laughs> 15 bucks. <laughs> uh, if you want tickets to a real show, uh, go to SeatGeek. It's always the first place I go to look for tickets to a game or concert. You can have the SeatGeek app right on your phone and get your tickets that way. Guys, I have a personal anecdote. I use SeatGeek this week. Look Where'd at that. You go? I'm going to see the Kings and the Warriors Oh, play that's awesome. In Sacramento. I love hockey. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the best part, guys. Our listeners get a $20 rebate off their first SeatGeek purchase. It's true, Tom. Wow. To get your $20 rebate on tickets, download the SeatGeek app, go to the settings tab, and click add a promo code. Enter promo code CROOKED. What's that code? CROOKED. There you go. <laughs> SeatGeek will send you $20 after you've made your first ticket purchase. Download the SeatGeek app and enter promo code CROOKED today. A lot of people that listen to this are people that care about the Affordable Care Act, right. and they're looking for ways to help. What would you tell them about the ways that they can get involved, be encouraged about fighting to preserve the gains of this bill? I think the work is local as opposed to federal. I would pay a lot of attention to what the Tea Party did fighting <laughs> the Affordable Care Act. Uh, you, you may disagree with the Tea Party, but they were effective in making sure that their views were heard and amplified. And so people working locally at town hall meetings, writing members of Congress personally, working local news, and 
you know, the, the advantage we have is the truth is on our side. There are a lot of people who have been helped. We don't have to gild the lily on it. We don't have to pretend that there aren't some challenges uh, in terms of people whose, whose premiums may need to get subsidized a little bit more. You know, there are rural communities where the choice of you know, providers, doctors, hospitals isn't as big as it should be. Uh, but generally speaking, the more we tell a story about how many people have actually been helped, the more pressure we are placing on this Congress and the president-elect to deliver on their claim and their promise that they can provide the same coverage or better coverage to everybody cheaper. And, and as I, I meant what I said, if, if they actually could do that, I'd support it. My guess is they can't because we spent a lot of time trying to figure out, could we do it better? And we knew that uh, the politics of some of the things that we, uh, some of the elements of the Affordable Care Act wouldn't be easy to sell politically. The reason we did it the way we did it was because that was the best option available in a really complicated uh, system. So I, I would just encourage everybody here, you, you can find a whole bunch of organizations that are uh, trying to amplify the importance of this issue and, and uh, organizing, but uh, focusing on not just the Beltway, but focusing on congressional districts, town hall meetings, district offices, if members of Congress are getting flooded with phone calls and hearing a bunch of stories and local newscasts are talking about people who are going to lose their health care coverage, then at minimum it puts pressure on uh, the incoming congressman and, and uh, administration to step up. Mr. President, um, thank you so much for your time. I'll give you one more question. You've talked a lot about uh, we're all trying to get our paragraph right in history. Yeah. What do you hope that paragraph says about you? You know, it, it's probably too early for me to say. And, you know, since I'm notoriously long-winded, it probably spills over into three paragraphs. <laughs> <laughs> then I got, got to call up Favs and say, man, how do we cut this thing? <laughs> um, I, I hope that it tells a story of a presidency and a, and a period of time in which the values of inclusion and opportunity and community and democracy were advanced that you know we pointed the country in a direction in which every kid mattered and in which treating people differently because of what they looked like or their faith or their sexual orientation uh, became less acceptable and we started rebuilding the ladders of opportunity for people who feel shut out from the economy and most of all that we made people believe that it is possible if you if you're willing to get in the arena uh, to move history and you know, when, I, when I think about will most gratify me it'll be if 20 years from now I can look back and I can say uh, look at all these people who first got involved, maybe even when they were too young to vote, in government, politics, issues, nonprofits, public service. And that wave just kind of, that cleansing wave washes over uh, the country. And if that happens, then the details of how we dealt with climate change or whether the individual responsibility mandate on the Affordable Care Act uh, was the right approach or not, uh, that becomes less important. Because, you know, if we're getting the broad direction right, this is a pretty ingenious country. They're full of ingenious people. And we'll figure it out. And that's what I want, is I want everybody to, to feel like we can figure this out if we just don't waste a lot of time doing dumb stuff. <laughs> Good paragraph. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good paragraph. We always wanted to thank you for doing the podcast. For yeah. giving us jobs. For the opportunity you gave us. And we're trying to think about the right way to how we think about you after all of this. And it, the thing is that for most of us, it's been 10 years of our lives since yeah. we went to work for you. And then in that 10 years, you never disappointed us, never gave us a reason to question it. And we're just really grateful for that. So thank you.
Yeah. That means a lot. You know, you guys, uh, you know, you, you guys were uh, the change uh, that we were waiting for, <laughs> according to some really fine speech writer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Thanks, proud of sir. you guys. Uh, Thanks, and, uh, uh, yeah, well, the war continues. It does. Man. Yeah, it does. Take care. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. Last interview. That's it. You did it. <laughs> Thanks to our presenting sponsor, Movement Watches, as well as SeatGeek, ZipRecruiter, and Blue Apron for supporting this podcast. Cooking feels intimidating. If you live in a city, it's sometimes more expensive to go to the grocery store. Blue Apron actually sends you great stuff that you can make yourself. You have fun doing it, and it's really good food. Blue Apron is great. I don't cook, and Blue Apron comes to the house. Emily gets excited. We open the box. There's all these fresh ingredients. Yeah. It doesn't take long. I watch her. I eat it. It's actually <laughs> fun to do. I have another person on your I learned to cook using Blue Apron. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. But it's a true story. Because I hate the grocery store. We were sitting in the White House and all of us ate at the mess three meals a day except for Levitude didn't have mess for the day. <laughs> but, uh, Guys, I mean, we have some exciting upcoming <laughs> meals. Uh, spicy shrimp and Korean rice cakes. Mm. Pork chops and garlic piccata. Yummy. Mushroom and chipotle pepper enchiladas. I mean, you left out the furikake. <laughs> I did. There is some farikake. Um, so check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com. Slash this is with regard to the construction of the Keystone Pipeline, something that's been in dispute, and it's subject to a renegotiation of terms by us. We're going to renegotiate some of the terms, and... If they'd like, we'll see if we can get that pipeline built. A lot of jobs, 28,000 jobs, great construction jobs. Okay, Keystone Pipeline. This is with respect to the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline. Dakota Access Pipeline. Again, subject to terms and conditions to be negotiated by us. Okay. That's, like, kind of sad, I guess. I don't know. It's sad. How about creating tons and tons of jobs with producing and distributing and installing mass solar? <laughs> Wouldn't that be like so much better to do? I don't know. <laughs> God, <laughs> that was like, I don't know. Yeah, we got the emotes at least. <laughs> Oil and coal. Why? <laughs> Why? Why?
Okay, so the thing is, solar is getting so cheap and cost effective that it's going to be everywhere eventually. It's just... I don't know, it's like, oh, let's put pe Hey, we're putting people to work by uh, building this fucking, like, oil pipeline. It's like... You know, not to mention all the other problems with it, but... It's just like... Feels so fucking backwards. I guess that goes along with what Trump says about making America great again, going backwards. It's such like a looking to the past sort of view. It doesn't seem to be looking forward at all. It's just like frustrating. I don't know. It's not like Hillary was talking to. Hillary didn't say shit about like automation and solar and shit. I don't know. Neither of them did. So I don't know. It's just, it's just fucked up. Like as Obama's leaving, Obama starts talking about this shit more, and then, I don't know. New president comes in and signs this fucking agreement to build an oil pipeline. It's just like, it's just kind of sad. I don't know. It feels like, Yeah, I mean, I think there will continue to be an increase in, like, houses with solar roofs and, like, battery storage technology. It's just it's sort of frustrating. Well, part of the problem is that it's oil. <laughs> like, that's part of the problem. There's a limited amount of oil, and there's this fucking burning ball in the sky that provides sunlight every day. <laughs> and, like, fucking take advantage of it. Fucking take advantage of it. Like, what the fuck?
China is going to go ahead of the U.S. with the way things are looking. Who's ready to move to China in four or five years or something? Like, seriously. It seriously seems like China is like going to succeed pretty efficient. Like they're going to be really efficient. I think they're going to succeed in kind of a big way. Like from what I've read about a number of issues, it just does seem like China is going to like do really well over the next 10 or 20 years. And I don't know about the United States, I don't know. I still have pain like here. It's really irritating. The pain is like right here. Energy storage, mega shift ahead, battery costs set to fall 60% by 2020. The key role energy storage will play in the electricity grids of the future, and the vital importance of investing in and testing the various emerging battery storage technologies has been highlighted in a major report published by the Australian Renewable Energy Agency. The report predicts a 40 to 60% price plunge for certain battery technologies by 2020. No, China's already automating. <laughs> like, they're already... Look at this. Uh, China's iPhone factories are being automated. iPhone manufacturer Foxconn plans to replace almost every human worker with robots. Like, China... This is not just one instance of it, though. Like, China is investing heavily in this stuff. Like, China's... I ha China is like investing in like all the good shit basically and like I don't know we're building a fucking oil pipeline like what the fuck I did hear about that Todd that does sound perhaps dystopian I'm not sure what to think about it I did hear about it though
Look at this. China's robot revolution. Factories in China are replacing humans with robots in a new automation-driven industrial re revolution. How will this effect? How will this effect be felt around the globe? Um, nine robots now do the job of 140 full-time workers. The company, which exports 1,500 sinks a day, spent more than 3 million on the robots. These machines are cheaper, more precise, and more reliable than people. I've never had a whole batch ruined by robots. I look forward to replacing more humans in the future, he adds with a wry smile. Thousands of factories like Chen's are turning it to automation in a government-backed, robot-driven industrial revolution, the likes of which the world has never seen. Since 2013, China has bought more industrial robots each year than any other country, including high-tech manufacturing giants such as Germany, Japan, and South Korea. By the end of this year, China will overtake Japan to be the world's biggest operator of industrial robots. According to the International Federation of Robotics, an industry lobby group, the pace of disruption in China is unique in the history of robots. Like, I'm telling you, China's on this shit. They're on it. Wow, this last article that I linked, it's pretty in-depth, actually. That's the thing, there's so much, like, information out there about this stuff, it's just, like... <laughs> that's why it was so frustrating that, like, none of this stuff was mentioned during the election. Like, the debates or anything, like, it just... I feel like the United States is, like, blind. I don't know. It, it drives me like, I don't know. I just had such a distaste for politics after like seeing how all this stuff is so ignored. And it seems so like crucial to the future of like civilization. Well, here's an article, though. The U.S. solar power employs more people than oil, coal, and gas combined. So I guess that's not such bad news for the United States. Um... There's a part optimist to me where it's like, so, like solar and other like clean energy and stuff is just gonna be simply cheaper just like it's simply just going to be cost effective from like a fucking capitalist standpoint to go with it regardless of environmental impact which is a like either way it might just come to pass which is good
I don't know. It's just weird we're building a fucking oil pipeline. It's just strange to me. I don't know. Here's this link, by the way. China's also investing in supercomputers bigger than anything in the US. They're investing in like renewable energy. They're <laughs> investing in robotics and automation. They're investing in like supercomputing and like machine learning. Like what the fuck are we doing? Like what the fuck? More good news though, cost of electricity from offshore wind farms drops by a third in just four years. So like, I don't know, these renewable energy, it, it, this is why it's frustrating that we're building the oil pipeline. Cause it's like, all right, well, Wind is getting cheaper, solar is getting cheaper, and these things don't require this, like, limited resource that also fucking hurts the environment, you know what I mean? It's like such a fucking win-win to, like, up upgrade our fucking energy, but we're, like, fucking stuck on, the co on like, coal and oil, which is, like, terrible. Becoming immortal, the future of brain augmentation and uploaded consciousness. <laughs> I like to think about this shit sometimes. Yeah, I know, Killer Clown. I'm looking forward to that. I think that's really cool. Oh yeah, I remember reading about this thing. 
scientists were able to elicit a pattern similar to the living condition of the brain when exposing dead brain tissue to chemical and electrical probes. So they fucking take a dead brain and, like, zap it, and then, like, the brain's thinking or some shit. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, I can't even comprehend. It's so insane to think about. Think about that. There's this brain, and then they're, like, stimulating the brain, and then it's, like, it's fucking work. The brain's doing stuff. It's thinking. (laughs) Like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck? Yeah, the barrier between life and death is kind of arbitrary. It's not, like, cleanly defined. The brain is not thinking. What is it doing? What the fuck is it doing? It's weird to think about. It's so weird to think about. But what if you're, like, stimulating the part of the brain that, like... You need alive cells to make proteins, regenerate lipids and such. I'm just... I'm just... I'm just curious about this shit. It's very strange. I feel like my logo doesn't have enough distinction between the letters anymore now that I made it darker. But I don't I don't know what to do. It's not like the brain owner would zap into consciousness for a second. But what if the part of the brain that like elicits consciousness like was like active during that like zapping procedure or whatever is it possible that like even though there's this dead brain like suddenly there's a like a thought like a thought happens (laughs) is that possible Well, it's not subtracting. It's just like, it's a mix of the two colors. It's just a 50-50 mix of the two colors.
It's just the two colors are so close now that you can't read it as well as an N and a W. A bunch of different parts of the brain. Well, what I'm saying though is like, well, wait, where's that article? I just closed it. Oh, wait, I found it. Elicit a pattern similar to the living condition of a brain. Scientists detailed how they able to elicit patterns, blah, blah, blah. Wait, I'm gonna go read this more. Wait, they didn't link to the actual thing, wait. No, they didn't link to the, they linked it improperly. Fuck this. Okay, never mind. fuck it. I remember seeing the actual article. It's just a curious thought where it's like you have a dead brain and then you like elicit this lifelike response from it by like stimulating it. And it's like, <laughs> could there be like an experience happening in that brain that's like just like a dead brain that's being like stimulated back to life for a moment? <laughs> Could there be an experience that like exists in that mind? You can get it to sputter a little. <laughs> it's just interesting to think about. It was accepted. It was. Sometimes I drink red wine. Not as much anymore though. Just red wine in general is much better than white wine, in my opinion. BLT rocker, you better put that PhD to good use. Fucking get on it, get on it. Get on that shit. Make some breakthroughs. Get that shit done. This is important.
to work on an aging project. Uh, what do you mean an aging project? Could you elaborate on that? I have to paint my nails again. This color is magnificent, though, and you can't see it very well, but like when it's sparkly, when you like really look at it really close, it, it looks better when there's a lot of light. When there's a lot of light on the nails, they start to sparkle a little bit. It's really good. I didn't even know it sparkled until I was like under some kind of like harsh lighting because it was like pretty bright light overhead or when the sun's out and like I let the sun shine off the nails or I let the strong overhead light because usually when I'm in my room like this usually I don't have that much light but um, under bright light it just like sparkles and it's like even though the nails are kind of like this soft, sort of like lilac-y, sort of like lavender, the sparkling is a little bit more like red, I think. A little more. It's a little bit less blue, the sparkles. So it's like suddenly, um, it looks really good. I'm not wearing a wig. I, look at my beautiful hair though. Wait, it looks worse now. What happened? What, what the fuck? Why don't I look amazing? Actually, it looks pretty good. My hair is decent. It could look better though. It was looking really good earlier. I don't know what happened. Did I like screw it up? <sighs> Certain indicators of learning are changed in very specific ways. Okay, so how learning is affected when you age, and like why. That's pretty interesting. It looks the same. I think it was like more together or something before. I have these beautiful curls. I didn't even have to try to get them, they just happen. <laughs> These are just my natural curls that just happen. And this side didn't come out as well. Like, this side came out really well. Breath of the Wild, I just want to play it, <laughs> just want to play it. I know Breath of the Wild was Nintendo's largest ever team. 
I don't really care too much about the size estimates. I just know that it's big. It's big. So is this like eventually trying to develop a way to make the brain not age as poorly? So the brain will remain healthy longer and more functional. And I guess reduce like brain disease or something. Is that kind of the work that you're trying to get into? That's pretty cool. I think that's like highly beneficial to the world. You're probably gonna live a long time, FML. I want to live a long time. I hope I do. I'm worried that I'm gonna keel over and die from digestive problems. Everything changes, Prince Tommy. Change is the only constant that we have in this life. Did the poop juice stuff work yesterday? Um, I woke up and it kind of worked a bit, but like didn't seem to really be that great like I don't know I'm not totally satisfied I know I want to like change okay like oh my god does it just need to be more colorful to like signify the difference between the N and the W. Yeah, thankfully. I slept on a towel in case anything got rowdy. But everything was fine. Wait, I need to go to Google and type define rowdy now. Noisy and disorderly. Well, I guess that works. It's a decent word choice. I designed this myself, I'm a genius, and it's a brilliant logo. I'm just a little bit worried that like 
the two shades are too close. I just changed it. Like, I had a purple version. I had, like, a lilac sort of lavender version of it that was, like, more clear, the difference. But um, now they're similar shades, so it's very... Um, it's harder to read it. I am not a news network. Actually, I, I kind of am a news network, aren't I? Well, yeah, the the colors I have right now are like maybe not ideal. It's just the purple shades. Um, the old colors that I had looked bad on the stream because it'd like kind of blend in with the wall and it'd just be kind of frustrating. It's fifty percent opacity right now. But the two shades, well, the three shades really are too close. Partially because of the opacity. But yeah, I don't know. Another thing that's weird too is that, like, if it have it like this, where it's like the, um, it's a, I kind of want the N to be more prominent, but the W becomes more prominent because there's more contrast. So if I create even more contrast, then the W has even more weight. It's like I want, I guess the N could be darker, but then it's like, actually maybe I could do that. Maybe I could reverse the, so the N is darker. Jelly Jiggler, that's an interesting theory. Wait, what do you mean and an item Link has on the amiibo? Wait, what does that mean? Jelly Jiggler. She does have, like, the same clothes. Or, like, well, I don't know. She just has that royal tunic or whatever, right? But what do you mean an item Link has on the amiibo? Wait, what are you talking about? Oh, do you mean that Zelda has the Sheikah Slates? Oh. What if it is like that? That would be, like, very cool. Now I'm tempted to, like, change the logo again. Wait, what would happen if I put it over the chat? Or underneath the chat? Like, if I put it under the chat? Where's my chat? I have too many fucking... Oh, what the fuck? Where is my chat? Twitch chat, okay. Oh, the background color is actually set somewhere else. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <sighs> Bottom corner, it gets sort of obscured. I need to figure out what the fuck to do with it. I love this logo, it's just saying, I wanna figure out the color and position and size.
Okay, I'm gonna bring my hair back, I think. I just heard a lot of noise in my digestive system. <laughs> I don't f I feel fine. I just heard like gur like I heard a lot of noise. <laughs> you heard that? Am I gonna have to go to the bathroom soon? <laughs> Should I try to go to the bathroom? That was so much noise. I could feel it. I don't know, that was crazy. Internal microphone? Holy fuck, that's funny. No! That was coming from my like stomach I took the huge laxative yesterday and it feels like it still hasn't like cleared me out or something yeah digestive problems <laughs> always okay I'm gonna try to go to the bathroom
not so great. <laughs> it feels like I still kind of need to go, but it's just like, I can't, I don't know. My hair is so good. Wait, where's my camera? Drink some coffee. I had some coffee hours ago. What time did I get up today? I can't remember. Yeah, the fucking Elite Four, they just do it. I know, it's a good hair day for me. I took special care of my hair when I was, like, in the bath. I was like, alright, I'm gonna... I'm gonna take good care of my hair, and I did. And this is the result. This side especially, though, is, like, extremely good. Oh wait, yeah, <laughs> I was looking at the wrong side. Ah, uh, see, I have a bad, this is my bad eye, so I can't even like see very well. I need good lighting though. taking selfies.
My fucking phone goes fucking crazy. If my phone hasn't been on in a while, it's just like, oh, you have a thousand new notifications. Time to like vibrate like fucking crazy. This is, I turned off vibrate and it's still like this. Okay, Jesus fucking Christ. Well, it's still going. Up. Stop. Stop. Oh, wait a minute, that sound. That sound was because I accidentally was recording a video and it the video captured the vibration noise and then the video was on loop and I didn't realize it. Oh my God, that was so confusing. What the fuck? Okay, I'm gonna take more selfies now. I'm not ready yet, I'm not ready yet.
I think I got the good ones. I got at least. I think I got at least one really good one. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I feel blessed to be alive today, and feeling pretty, and just feeling confident. I got some really good ones. I think. Ah, I must upload these now. Come on. Come on. There's this one picture that's like, I think it's the one. I think it's the one. There's a couple of good ones. Oh my god! I think it's the prettiest picture of my life. Upload right now. <laughs> Wait, I want all of them to upload. Why is this app... Okay, close the app. Reopen the app now that I have Wi-Fi connected. Upload. Upload. Oh, here we go. Uploading, including the really bad pictures I took of me when I was at um, urgent care. There's some, I don't know, there's that one, well, I don't know, hold on, I need to look at these full size. Maybe they're not as good as I think they are, but wait, hold on, alright. Alright, here we go. It's time to witness my selfies. All right, let me see. My lips look kind of bad. Oh, there's that's pretty. Pretty. Very good. Almost, uh, there's a little bit something. Oh, this is the one, I think. I think this is the one. Okay. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. That one's less good. This one's better. That one's not as good. Okay. Okay, so, wait. God, I look so bad at urgent care. I look so fucking bad. Actually, there's one where I'm crying and I don't look so bad. Wait, hold on. Oh, that one's really good. That one's really good. Oh, my lips look bad in that one. That one's blurry, and that one's like the lighting's not the best. However, it Yeah, my lips could look better. I need to take better care of my lips. Oh, I don't know which of these two I like better. Is that shit on my monitor? Or is that part of the picture? Okay, it was part of the monitor, good. 
this picture. I wish my lips looked smoother. They look kind of like. There's this other pic. Oh, I can't tell which is better. No. Maybe this one's better. I started to like change my mind. I think the other one's better. Yeah, the other one. It's the other one. I think the other one's better. Wait, let me like flip the canvas horizontal. Now I'm frustrated. I have this like eye that's like partially lazy and I, I like kind of wonder if it's kind of like bugging me in one of the pictures. And then the other picture, I think this is the picture. I think this is the picture actually, but I almost look prettier than the other one, kind of. Well, I don't know. There's other pictures that are good, though. It has to be this one, I think. I think I just have to put this on the internet, like right now. I think I just have to take this image and get it on the internet right now. Okay, I'm posting it on Twitter. Is that the picture? Is that the picture? Should I just upload like three of them? Oh, I just see like the thumbnail of it and it's like smaller and like... See, at first I thought the other picture was like the best picture of me and then I was like wait I'm having second thoughts and then I'm like oh oh I should just upload both of them I'm just gonna I just have to upload both of them fuck it I need to put them both online the other one is a better like smaller picture like it's it looks better smaller the other one might might look better bigger I feel like my eye is like lazy or something. I have other good pictures in here too, but I'm just gonna do the double. I'm gonna hit you with the double, the double selfie. Okay, it's going online right now. There it is. Oh no, someone responded, P good. 
I feel judged. <laughs> I feel judged. I'm judged. Oh no. <sighs> There's a couple other decent pictures. Those are the, probably the two best ones, though. I just wanted to like kind of capture my hair. That's like why I took the selfies because I thought my hair. I love how it. I don't know. You have to know the status of my bowels. I think I'm still, I still need to kind of go to the bathroom, kind of, but I can't. I don't know. I could take more laxatives. It's kind of like weird. <laughs> yeah, that's from the stream. Last time. That's like actually a good picture of me. Even though I look so fucking... I was so tired. I still look good in that, surprisingly. Partial success, yeah. Um, what time is it? It's not early morning, it's after early morning. Why am I taking laxatives? The only reason I started taking laxatives is because I got sharp pain and sometimes um, like bloating and gas and it got the pain got really scary so I went to the doctor and then the doctor's like you're full of shit literally and laxatives over-the-counter laxatives yes very good and so now sometimes I take laxatives, but it doesn't seem to really help that much. <laughs> like it just like occasionally makes me have less comfortable shits and sometimes like it feels like I still have bloating and I still have pain. Like I don't know, it's fucking stupid.
What did I eat for breakfast? I had a coffee Soylent, and then I had a regular Soylent. Oh, this is something you made. Did that ending part? Wait, hold on. I, I want to listen to it again. Yeah, I like the beginning of it a lot. And then the... That part... <laughs> that little part right there kind of bugs me. I, I don't know, it, for some reason, it like the drums fill out and then they don't, and then they do it again. I don't know. And then it sounds pretty good. I'm being really nitpicky, but... Yeah, I like the beginning the most. What on earth is this automatic jack? I didn't know the reference. I like Zinnia's YouTube videos. Thank <laughs> you. 
I don't know what happened with Zinnia, because, like, apparently she got into some, like, Twitter war, and then, like, um, stopped tweeting and, like, left Twitter or something. But I, I like her YouTube videos. I wasn't really sure what happened with the Twitter thing. <laughs> Um, the rules on streaming music. Okay, the rules on streaming music are that I can stream anything. The problem is that a lot of music will get the stream partially muted. And then, you know, if I'm saying something important, then it's gone. Some music will get the entire s stream muted once I upload it to YouTube. And then the stream's like useless then. So I just need to like, actually, the thing is Twitch should actually automatically mute the music that would get my stream fully muted on YouTube before I export it. So actually, um, maybe it wouldn't be too terrible to play music sometimes. It's just that it would mute parts of the stream, especially where I might be talking about something interesting or something, whatever. Oh yeah, let me listen to this one now. This reminds me of something, but I can't place it. Like this part in specific. I like this part. For some reason, because I know that you used presets, my mind wants to be like really harsh for some reason and like pick out anything that I don't like even a little bit. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like that. I don't know, I guess that's a silly way to look at it though. Well, I don't know. Oh, this is getting me thinking about all sorts of stuff now. How about like, um, like you could use a filter on an image and call it art, but then knowing that it's a, uh, oh shit, I'm afraid this will get muted or something. <laughs> I don't know if any music on SoundCloud is like copyright protected with like YouTube algorithm shit or whatever, but um. Yeah, I don't know. Is it gonna be thinking about like art and like, um, I don't know. I don't really know the creative process with uh, what's it called again? The program. Mixcraft. Yeah, I don't really know much about Mixcraft. Like, oh yeah, like for this part, wait, where is it? Yeah, like, so this part, do you take this instrument and then do you like, cause it sounds like you change the uh, quality of the instrument. Yeah, like here, right? Like, so how, did you, sorry, I'm like picking in your creative process, like how, like, did you take that instrument and then like apply some sort of like 
uh, like equalizer or something. Or I don't know what it exactly would be to create that sound. The way the sound changes over time. Yeah, I use Fruity Loops. Fruity Loops has similar things with like changing sound over time with like equal bending equalizer stuff or whatever. Like, I don't know. Make some music. It well, it sounds like it gets altered over time. Like it starts off and then it like changes. Like the EQ changes. But yeah, I don't know. I liked that piano part the most, I think. Coming up. Yeah, I like this part the most, the, the way the piano is. But I don't like the womp, 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 womp when it gets louder, I think. <laughs> it feels almost like invasive, but I mean, I don't know. That's just like a subjective thing, isn't it? The piano is nice though. Sorry, I feel like I'm like picking apart your art and I don't know. I, like I said, for some reason like, <laughs> like knowing that there are like preset sort of tracks, like I feel like digging into like, like what it how is this constructed and like <laughs> like i don't know i like that little drum thing from the last song like i don't know like that um that first song the drums is like going pretty fast and then like there's a bit where it went really fast and then it stopped again and then it like sped up and then it like or what am i trying to say then it doubled and then it like went back into like the song or whatever but that little that little spot where it was fast for some reason that bothered me and I didn't like it. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't mean to be like rude or anything though. Do I like sad songs? Sometimes. Sometimes I do. It's a bit louder. God, I have this pain still, like, here. It sucks. I think I like this one the most, actually. Yeah. 
there is a little weirdness, but... For some reason, this part, the ending, seems weird. It, for some reason, the ending seems a little weird. I don't know exactly what's up with it, but... Yeah, I think I like that one the most. I also the yeah. Damn, Twitter today. Hey, MC, what's up? How you doing? <laughs> I know, today is a good day. I feel happy today. What's happening on Twitter? I just like it's a mix of like politics and sadness and then uh, a really funny I saw a really funny like string of tweets from someone <laughs> just like I don't know Did I wreck noobs? I posted some selfies that I liked. <laughs> That's about as much wrecking of the noobs as I've done. I still want to like... Get perfectly smooth beautiful, radiant skin in general, but also especially, uh, like my chin. It's not too bad today because I shaved, but I, I didn't like put makeup on it or anything. So it's just kind of like a little rough and it's like, I want to eliminate all the hair and then like really nice skincare and then just like feel beautiful and soft. <laughs> 2017 is my time to shine. I I think I'm gonna start shining. I think I'm gonna start shining. Oh, you just updated to Windows 10. I've been on it for a while. Uh, I just updated right away. But Windows 10 annoys me a bit because like it sometimes says these notifications like you need to update your calendar settings or some bullshit. <laughs> it's like I never use your fucking built-in calendar. 
Well, I guess I do actually. But I don't really use it though. And like, or, or you have to update your Outlook settings or just some shit I don't use. I don't know. And it's like always saying like, you need to fix your Microsoft account and like all this other shit. It's just like, please just like leave me alone. <laughs> Windows 10 is malware. Yeah, I started hormones uh, like 14 months ago. It's a long time ago. Electrolysis is like, I'm doing electrolysis now after laser. Because electrolysis is more permanent anyway, so don't despair about it. It's fine. Laser is like a temporary solution, I think. And max out your CPU 100%. I was thinking of building a new PC. I actually bought, um, I bought like a big hard drive and I bought a solid state drive and I haven't installed them yet. I want to get the operating system on the SSD, but I, I need to figure out how to do that. I need to figure out how to do that before March because I want, I want to get it all working before March, but I don't think I'm going to build a new computer though. I just want to like install the hard drives. <laughs> Well, laser, yeah, laser is not perfect, and I don't know, it didn't seem to, I mean, it, it, it seemed to work, like, temporarily, kind of, but still not, great, like, amazingly well. How has my mood been after HRT? I've been mood swingy. I was really sad for a long time. I'm feeling better now, but now I'm having like health problems, like digestive problems. Um, I had like horrible anxiety, but that was more related to abusing cannabis and also um, reading tons of hate constantly. And I've stopped reading the hate. I've done with it. And I stopped cannabis as well, so I'm done with that too. The future of competitive melee. Um, It's hard for me to call what the future of Melee is going to be like because on one hand I feel like it could start to fall behind newer games and eventually become kind of samey where it's like, oh, we've seen this matchup, we've seen good gameplay, we've seen this, we've seen all these situations before. Alright, yeah, alright, there's the fox player, alright, <laughs> you know, and it's like, okay. And eventually getting tiring and less interesting and more than, like, in order to, like, sustain interest, people would start, like, getting more into, like, the players and the personalities of the players and drama between the players and, like, focus on, like, yeah, storylines and stuff, which they, they kind of focus on storyline, but, like, there's the other side of it though, where it's like, sometimes when there's a really good fucking match, it's just like really excellent to watch. And at Genesis during top eight, there were definite instances of just like the tournament being awesome to watch and just like quality, serious quality. And humans will never be like, I mean, like, I don't know. People are always gonna <laughs> like, Playing melee, like you can't totally math. You're gonna make mistakes. You know, there's gonna be some variance with like execution and messing up and nerves, nervousness, and like pulling off really si like sick stuff. And so, 
it has potential to like survive and be exciting for a long time but also what i said before so like it's like balancing these things i don't know i don't know what the future of melee is but i also wonder what the future of the smash series is with like smash for switch and potentially what happens with that at the moment like smash wii u gets less viewers than melee but it's also just gotten this giant tournament circuit in california every month they have huge tournaments and there's a bunch of money going into it and smash for switch has to come out eventually i assume and at that point what's going to happen are they going to like update some characters and like new characters and like balance and like uh, will Nintendo start to take a little bit more of a role as they've started to by sponsoring events and having advertisements? So, my point. And also, Melee HD is a potential thing. And also, um, don't forget also that there are controller uh, modifications and alternative controllers and stuff in development which also changes things and like the fact that melee is bad for your hands it's not good for your wrists or i think i think the game view controller in general is just not very good for your wrists so i don't know do you know what to say That's my opinion. Everyone is bitching about how the scene would be an endless stream of Fox Dittos. Well, sometimes it is. And sometimes matches are not really that exciting, and it's like, who cares, who cares, who cares? But then you see shit like Mango vs. Leffen at Genesis, and it's just like, holy fuck, that was really fucking awesome to watch. And it was just a beautiful match. So, what can I say, like, <laughs> what can I say? It's hard to say, all oh, M3K, it's hard to say, it's hard to say. I think there's a lot of potential with Smash for Wii U and the eventual successor to it though. I think there's still a lot of potential there. There's like a lot of characters that are more viable the game's more balanced but it's also the execution is not like as insane as melee so sometimes those insane moments that happen in melee or like, sometimes you don't get those insane moments as much, really. D-Girl, did you watch Hax's video? The video from Hax Money? I don't know, Smash is a beautiful game. I spent a decade of my life playing Melee. I think it's a brilliant game, way ahead of its time. And even though I don't have interest in it now, other than occasionally watching people play it, I have a lot of respect for the game. But also I think that Smash Wii U fixed a lot of Brawl's faults, and now with a game that's more balanced, there's a lot of interesting stuff going on with that game. And that a potential sequel or port or whatever also has a lot of potential. And 
I am sick of how I'm sick of their rule set though. I really wish they'd play random Omega stages. I know it's like, oh, no platform diversity then. Well, I don't even fucking I don't fucking care. I I want the beautiful stages, the beautiful music, and not listening to the same fucking Animal Crossing themes over and over and over again, all for the sake of, like, a moving platform, where they just, like, what do they do with the fucking moving platform? What do they do with it? They, like, shark under it a little bit, and they, like, sometimes use a platform to, like, get some, like, really obnoxious off the top, like, lift them off the top with Zero Suit Samus shit or something. I don't know. I'm not impressed by the platforms in the game. In Melee, you could wave land off the platforms and shit. It's like, okay, fuck it. Just go all Omega. I don't care. No more fucking bullshit with, like, spending all this time doing rock, paper, scissors and counterpicking all the shit. Fuck it. Just go random Omega every match. Tournaments would be way smoother run, and it would be way more pleasant on my ears and eyes, frankly. <laughs> Whatever. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion, but I don't think my mind can be easily swayed on this. I'm like pretty damn set on it. Well, I mean, it's just a different metagame, D-Girl. Platforms give certain characters an advantage too. And having a mix of platforms and no platforms also gives certain characters, and it's just a different meta, no matter what. It's like, there's some meta game regardless of what the rule set is. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't even play in tournaments, so it's not really my, like, place to speak on this so much, except it is kind of, because I'm, like, obsessed with, like, <laughs> well, whatever. The point is, I think it'd be way more pleasant to watch a tournament where it was random Omega. I think it'd be way more pleasant. Like, okay. I, it's crazy to me. I don't know. They, like, allow Lilac crews with this crazy platform tilting and shit. But they, like, don't allow, like, a little stage hazard or something. I don't know. I don't know. And then everyone's just like, ban more stages, ban Dreamland should be banned, it's too much like Battlefield except the ceiling or whatever, or like, I don't know, or some other shit, like, they, people always say like, ban this, ban that, get rid of these stages, we have, must have only three stages, it's like, fuck it, just play Random Omega, you get all the delicious backgrounds and music, and there's no more having to do all this procedure before each match, you can just play the fucking game, there's no more stage johns, there's a little bit of stage johns with like, you get some characters that can wall jump on some stages, right? And then sometimes the lip of the stage is different, and sometimes it's a, a, a stage that doesn't have a z-axis, so you get, like, slightly different properties on moves. But for the most part, it's just no Johns. Well, I'm saying the rule set is... The rule set for Smash 4 is based on rule sets from Brawl, which was based on a rule set from Melee. It's like literally just copying the same sort of like history of the game because that's what we've always done, so let's just do this again and again and again. Even though Sakurai gave us all these perfectly competitive stages with beautiful different backgrounds and music to get rid of the monotony of listening to the same fucking Animal Crossing theme over and over. And the platforms. I don't even think they add too much to the game. I don't. I really don't. Honestly. I mean, for Melee, I think it's different. But for Smash Wii U, like, I would rather watch a tournament that's all Omega for sure. Like, definitely. The platforms just add, like, a little bit of jank. And it's just like, okay, I don't... I don't know. Fuck it. Okay, so, okay, so you have your edge cancel gimmick with your up B. Great. Good for you. Alright, so you have your back throw off the side of the platform, getting an early KO, fine. Okay, Zero Suit Samus and Bayonet off the top, okay. Meta Knight off the top, whatever, it's like, okay. It's like, this isn't really interesting, diverse gameplay or whatever that I care about. Or like, oh, other times you just like shark the bottom or you like do a couple short hops while they're shielding and like, 
oh, oh, you hit him with the up air, but he shielded it, and then he jumped out, or whatever. It's like, I'm not interested. I don't care. I'd rather just have the diversity of the aesthetics. The aesthe I care more about the aesthetics than this, like, little bit of diversity you get with, like, platforms in existence. I mean, I'm, I'm probably downplaying the import, like, the impact of the plat. I'm probably downplaying it a bit, but I'm just so fucking tired of the Animal Crossing theme every time. Like, fuck, it's, it, it's such an, I think it's ugly, too. Like, Smashville is such an ugly stage, I think, and, uh, it's just, like, this every time, like, every fucking time, really. And then you get this crazy ridiculousness with the counterpick, like, Duck Hunt, it's like, Oh, okay. This is your this is your fully sanctioned competitive stage. Okay. Or like Lila with a crazy tilt which totally changes the game entirely. Like tilt is crazy. It's so fucking crazy. So like I guess you could say those stages offer diversity, but it's like this it's such like a crazy difference. I don't know. It's just like the ruling pisses me off. It's like we have really limited stages, but you can have this like totally ridiculous experience with Duck Hunt and Lilat. Or you can have these like annoying, I don't know, I'm just like fucking whining right now. And people could argue against me, and I would debate someone, I'm happy to debate someone about this shit. If someone wants to debate me about like stages and Smash tournaments, fucking debate me then. But, um... I'm just kind of whining, honestly. But, like, I don't know. Walk-offs must be banned, but we can have this fucking tree that you can, like, fucking camp the shit out of. Or, <laughs> I mean, it depends on the characters, obviously. But the tree is pretty insane, though. You have to admit, the platform height is ridiculous. Like, that's such a huge change to, like, a match. It changes things so much. Wait, like, I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, okay, whatever. Well, Arthesius, that's why I'm saying Random Omega, now you have like 30 viable maps, and there's no need to even allow counterpicking. You can just random it every, every round, and then you don't have to worry about rock, paper, scissors, stage striking, and counterpicking. All you have to do is focus on playing the fucking game, <laughs> and you get the bonus of all the beautiful aesthetic beauty that Sakurai has gifted you <laughs> like everyone's just like totally missing this they're just like we must have the platforms but I just like disagree I don't know I disagree you want some fucking platforms why don't you turn items on low all right turn items on low then you can have your fucking platforms and why don't you turn on some walk-off stages too here, turn on Delfino, turn on, uh, fucking, I don't care, <laughs> I don't fucking care, turn on half the stages in the game, give me half the stages, just get rid of the huge fucking stages, you know, whatever, turn some fucking items on, you know, like, then you can play with your fucking platforms, but you know what, <laughs> you could also have a tournament that's just random omega, no items, just fucking rocket, no fucking counterpicking, no stage striking, no bullshit, no rock, paper, scissors. Just play the fucking game. Play the fucking game. I have strong opinions. And they are my own opinions. They're, they're unique to me. Kind of. Like... No one's really, like, talking about this. I feel like I've brought this up multiple times in the last couple of years. Because I'm so... It's, like, Animal Crossing stage every fucking time. Either that or just, like, these really... Like, I don't know. Like, okay. I like watching fights on, like, Lilat and shit. Like, I'm... It's, like, okay, cool. It's just, like... Every fucking tournament copy-paste the same fucking rule set. So, like, across the fucking nation, everyone's copying the same fucking rule set of, like, 
All right, here we go. Time to copy the Smashboards metagame over and over and over and over and over again. And just like, I'm, I'm, I'm brain dead right now. I can't even talk about this right now. I'm, I'm literally unable to form a cohesive argument at this point. The point is like, it's just frustrating to me. As a viewer, as a viewer and as a player, even though I don't travel to tournaments and I don't play in tournaments, I used to for 10 years in Melee, but even though I don't do it as a viewer, oh, turn, turn items on would be beautiful. It's just a different metagame. There's nothing wrong with it. Like literally, you could run item tournaments, no fucking problem. You just get the players to accept that items have variants to them. By the way, every fucking match has variants. Every single fucking match has variants. Don't talk to me about fucking RNG when humans have reaction time and people are doing like mix ups and shit and like randomly choosing shit sometimes. And it's like, you can't say it's all reads. Like, so, and sometimes you're just like, ah, oh, there's always variants. There's always fucking variants. There's human variants. Sometimes you just like, it's a little bit off, you know? Not everything is so fucking exact. It's not so fucking exact. You could totally run an items tournament. You could totally fucking run an items tournament. But also, you could totally run a tournament that's random omega, no items. You could totally do that and be totally good. It would be good. It'd be so much better to watch. IMO, it'd be so much better to watch. Just because you wouldn't have to listen to the same, witness the same, it's like, all right, grand finals, everyone. Time for grand finals. And then it's like, wait, hold on. No, what is that? No. Wait, what is that song? <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. Yes, okay, are you ready? Wait, is this it? Yeah, yeah all right. Everyone, it's time for Grand Finals! I'm just saying, like, it happens so much, I'm tired of it. By the way, I stole that joke from A-Star. A-Star came up with Grand Finals, and then that song plays, and it's like, rocking out to that fucking song or something. It's just like, well, <laughs> fuck it. Hey, what's up? <sighs> okay, so if I ran tournaments, you want to know what I would do if I ran fucking Smash Wii U tournaments? Okay, there'd be no doubles. Doubles is gone. Instead, okay, so instead of singles, there's two singles tournaments. And one of the singles tournaments is random omega, two stock, no items. Okay, the other tournament has, like, most of the stages allowed. There'd be a stage list, and there'd be traditional counterpicking. But there'd be certain stages that are banned, such as Palutena's Temple... Uh, temple and uh, uh, Gower Plain and uh, the crazy Kirby stage that's huge those stages would be banned and maybe a few more okay but also items would be on on like lower medium like maybe medium and they'd be like two or three stock yeah that's what I would those are the two tournaments that I would run Yeah, great cave offensive. <laughs> that would be banned at my tournament. Yeah, stock means your lives. Yeah. <sighs> so 
So there could be those two singles events, and then there could be, like, another event, maybe, like, a gimmick event, where it'd be, like, well, maybe it could be, well, I don't know, maybe running three events at one tournament's too much, but, yeah, medium items, why not medium, okay, medium items and, like, a wide stage list, totally, but also, I remember some people are trying to do 3v3 tournaments, now that it's possible to do it. Which I thought was kind of cool that they were doing that. Even though it was like kind of a clusterfuck and I didn't really care to watch it. It was still cool that they were trying that. And you know, people are trying like custom items and uh, me's and shit, but... I don't know. I would totally just like... Basically, I would do the opposite of like the fucking Smash Boards meta. I would tear it into two pieces. I'd be like, you want your counter picks and your stages? Here, have a whole bunch more stages. Have items too. There you go. Now you have a tournament. Oh, by the way, for all the people complaining about this shit, here's the fucking, like, purist tournament where all the stages are Omega, there's no counter picks, and have at it, there's no items. That would be my two tournaments. I would tear singles into two events, and then I would, I would get rid of doubles, because I don't even really care, to be honest. <laughs> Doubles is some is sometimes cool to watch. It's not like it's not like abolish doubles worldwide. No more doubles ever. I'm just saying that like if I ran a tournament, if I ran a tournament, that's how I'd run it. I'd split doubles into two events and get or sorry, I'd split singles into two events and I'd get rid of doubles. I do my my hair, well. I got a bleach like over a year ago, and so now I have blonde on the bottom. But as far as like the hair styling or whatever, like this is just done from home. I just take care of myself. Yeah, 4v4, you could do that. I'm just, yeah, this is more of like a, well, here's the thing though, right? I'm just irritated by this because it feels like every fucking tournament is like Battlefield, Smashville, Town and City, Dreamland, uh, Duck Hunt, and Lilat or whatever. Every fucking tournament is like that stage list or like similar. And the Omega stages are totally neglected and I don't know it's just like frustrating to me as a viewer because it feels like wasted potential like just wasting the potential of the Omega stages and then wasting all these other stages too that could be more viable with items in my opinion even though it'd be a separate metagame and you could argue that there'd be like a lot of fucking ridiculous shenanigans but that'd be the fun of it that'd be the fun of it there would be some fucking shenanigans and I'm fine with that. Because there'd also be the purest event. Like, that's the thing. Like, I think it'd be a good way of doing it. That's my fucking opinion. You know what I wish I could do? Because I'm pretty much just an online player now. That'd be awesome if I could design the online tournaments for regular tourneys in Smash Wii U. Because, like, whoever designed that, like, whoever chose the rules for the tournaments... Alright, I'm, I'm firing shots right now. I don't know who at Nintendo... Like, I don't know whose job it was to design... The regular tourney rule set for all the regular tourneys that happen in tournament mode but i would be better at that fucking job i would be better at that job than whoever did it i swear to fucking god i would and they also you know they had equipment in smash right they had equipment 
I knew the fucking speed equipment was so fucking broken right away, and I abused it, and they had a tournament called Custom Glory, and I would win the tournaments doing insane camping over and over, and I broke the fucking mode, and they took it out of the game. They literally took it out of the game after I, after I abused the fuck out of it. So it was so clear to me immediately. It was immediately clear to me how broken the shit was. And it's like, fucking hire me, Nintendo. I'm valuable. I have insight. I am, like, a visionary. I would do that job better than whoever fucking did it. Like, whoever did that job, like, okay, I could balance equipment better. I could, like, like, equipment was obviously broken right away. Just have me on the fucking playtesting team, and I would tell you this shit is fucking broken. And then... The designing the the fucking regular tourneys, I would create much better fucking tournament settings, way better, and it would be like way the fuck better. Just all they have to do is hire me. Just saying. The Bill Trinan doesn't even follow me on Twitter. Even though we have similar interests. Bill Trinan's always... Look at... Let's go to Bill Trinan's Twitter. Okay. Bill Trinan. Science alert. The Verge. Uh, Wired. BBC Technology. Futurism. Like, more look, Bill Trin's tweeting an account called Futurism talking about automation of uh, a restaurant that creates pizza. Like, literally, me and Bill Trin are operating on a similar wavelength. I'm not firing shots at Bill. I, I respect, he doesn't follow me. He doesn't follow me, but we have similar interests and passions. And he's like this high up Nintendo person. And I'm like, I would totally be valuable to Nintendo in some ways. I'm telling you this. And it's just like, fuck. <laughs> no, I respect Bill Trinan a lot. I like how public he is. Like, he tweets all the time. He, he retweets really interesting, cool shit. And like... I respect him a lot. It's just I'm like I feel like I'm totally off of his radar. We even had the same fucking he header picture with like Link climbing the mountain. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the connections. Actually, to be fair though, there's like a huge amount of people in Nintendo Treehouse who like follow me. There was one day where I was like, who from Nintendo is on Twitter? And I like did some digging, okay? And I found like a whole bunch of people who work at Nintendo Treehouse and stuff, or like doing translation and shit. And I followed all of them on Twitter. Like the whole, everyone I could find who worked at Nintendo, I followed every one of them. And a bunch of them followed me back, to be honest. So some people at Nintendo even though it's like Nintendo of America Treehouse or whatever. Um, yeah, I'm on their radar. I'm on their radar. I, I'm just not on Bill Trinan's radar. Maybe Bill Trinan, like, maybe Bill Trinan has, like, observed some of my stuff, but just, like, chooses not to follow me. I don't know. I have no idea. I met Bill Trinan very briefly at the Nintendo World Championships. I like recognized him and I was like, hey, and then like he didn't really know who I was I think at the time. Yeah, Bill's playing hard to get.
I have no idea. Was that one of the Nintendo Directs? I sort of forgot about that. It's not that I want to make... Well, okay, there's a game I want to make that I've actually already kind of made that I want to, like, work on more and, and like, polish and make it really good. So there's, there is a project, a game creation... Like, there's a game dev project that I'm working on. And it's pretty good, by the way. Like, I think if I had, like, a whole team behind me, but I could be, like, the lead fucking, like... If I could be, like, the lead and I'd have a whole bunch of, like, slave programmers to do my bidding, I think I could create something fucking insanely good by the way and i'm trying to do it all on my own and it's like it's okay but th it feels like there's so much i have to do still and then even once i get it all done there's like a lot of like i don't know it's like it feels like a bit of a hassle to like i don't know i should i should i don't know fuck it whatever um what was i saying though oh yeah like about working at Nintendo, though, like, if, <laughs> at Nintendo, <sighs> see, my role at Nintendo would be so, like, <laughs> they just hire me as a fucking meta gamer and, like, use me for playtesting certain things or, like, critiquing certain aspects of certain things, and... I could be valuable in that sense. But it's not like playtest random games. I'm talking about like the stuff I was just talking about with like the Smash regular tourney settings and shit like that. And like uh, Zelda's balance, for example. That's another one. And then like equipment, like the speed equipment. That's another one. And probably even stuff like virtual console releases and uh, like potentially the way they structure like well not the way it's structured but like certain like settings or menus or something well i don't know there could be something with like zelda maybe but i don't have a clear image for that or really the vc stuff as well it's sort of like i just have a couple critiques with smash right like that i feel like i could have i could have done a better job or i could have been valuable to them if I was actually part of Nintendo. But there's a lot of people who could probably... There's a bunch of people who could be valuable to Nintendo. That's the thing though, that's like, I wish that they, Nintendo had a way to like, interface with their fans more, like the fans who care a lot. Like, if there could be a little more collaboration to the point where it's like instead of Nintendo like harshly slapping down your like ROM hack projects with fucking cease and desists or whatever maybe it could be more like oh well you can create custom costumes for Smash and like get them as part of the actual game shit like that like projects that people work on like somehow integrate it with the fucking company to the point where it's like like it's more harmonious i guess one person's not good enough to, to determine balancing well listen though i can tell you that zelda was low tier immediately i knew it and it's still obvious to me what she's like lacking it like some of the stuff is so stupid and it's like obvious it's so obvious it's so obvious and i'm just saying that like i would definitely play test like zelda and like the character in melee or in smash i mean and i mean i play test as <laughs> breath of the wild too but i'm just talking about like as far as like something i'd I could potentially be useful for Nintendo, like, fucking Zelda's design in Smash is, like, flawed. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, and the balance, like, the tears start to, like, become, like, more evident. And it's not just bullshit. It's, like, there is clear imbalance. And 
this, the imbalance should be like rectified. This should be like fixed. Well, their job listing. What's their fucking job listing gonna say? It doesn't say like we want to hire meta gamer. Okay. <laughs> Mobile game developer, software engineer, AI engineer, system engineer, Windows, administrative assistant, administrative assistant, what do you think that means? System engineer, associate system administrator, CX, web designer, network engineer, senior manager, talent management web designer, system administrator. Like, what is this? Like, how do I have any hope at like, being able to get to that position where I have this influence that would actually be useful and not like working on like a website or something. They can say they don't care about competitive balance, but they certainly had a lot of patches. And even though the patches are over, the imbalance is still so clear. And like, you don't have interviews where it's like, you should play a real fighting game if you want competitive battles. But at the same time, they create like an Omega version of every stage and like do a whole bunch of balance patches. And like, they buff the bad characters and they nerf the good characters. It's like, they're kind of doing it. It's just. It could be taken further, and it could be even more harmonious, and I just, like, you know, as someone who, like, plays the fuck out of the game a lot, it's like, it'd be cool if it could get to that point. I don't know. It's just... Maybe they don't care that Zelda is just, like, non-viable for, like, winning national tournaments. Maybe they just don't care. Maybe they're like, that's fine. Zelda can just be the troll character in the free-for-all who hits you with Din's fire and teleport. But it's still just sad to me. To me it's sad. And it, it can be improved. Like, what if equipment was way more balanced? That would actually be an interesting, like, alternative meta. I mean, it, it might turn really degenerate, but... Like, it was so obviously so imbalanced. It was so broken. It's like they could have done it way better. Well, I'm just saying that's the character I have a lot of experience with. But... You know, there's other characters that are bad and other characters that are good, and... I don't know. I want a more balanced game. There's an opportunity for a Zelda revamp if they design the characters after Breath of the Wild. There's potential revamp coming up, you know what I mean? And maybe Zelda will s stop being like slow and tall and light and full of like gimmicky moves. <laughs> like, maybe there's hope. Maybe there's hope.
Uh, no, T remaster. If that ever happened, well, they already did 3D. You know what I mean. If they ever did a remaster of that, I mean, I'd probably play it just out of curiosity. But I don't know. Yeah, the 900 Korok puzzles. I'm assuming like. I don't know. <laughs> Suddenly think of like the witness or something. I don't know. Some like simple thing. Or maybe like a randomly. Maybe they like randomly created a bunch of them. Or I don't know actually. I don't, I don't know what they are. I'm assuming they're going to take like 15 seconds to beat Danny. I'm assuming they're like 15 seconds long. And there's like. Maybe they're all in one place in the game, so it's just like, oh, we're gonna go to the puzzle area now. It's like a mini game or something, maybe. And then you just like, they're 15 seconds long if you know the solution or, or like whatever. Maybe it's kind of like that. I don't know. Or like the cabana puzzles. I was thinking it could be similar to the cabana puzzles. Next polish shade. I might just redo the same color. I don't know. No, oh, why am I yawning? I don't remember when I woke up. Three point seven five hours at fifteen seconds per puzzle. Do you think there's a oh wow? Have fun with your hundred percent speedrun if those are like giving you some sort of completion thing. Which they might. All right, everyone, it's like 120 shrines. That's probably longer than 120 star. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Or a similar. And then you have 900 puzzles, and then you have dungeons and like whatever else. The shrines are mini dungeons in Breath of the Wild. There's 120 of them. And I'm assuming that it'd be kind of comparable to, like, getting all the stars in Mario 64. Except you'd have to travel to each shrine. Because instead of, like, having one painting with a bunch of level with a bunch of stars in it, you have different shrines spread everywhere, and there's 120 of them. Oh yeah, 76 side quests? That's insane. Oh my god. Well, that could just be like, you know, oh, you get a heart piece. Oh, you get a whatever. Are there heart pieces? I mean, there's more hearts. I'm assuming there's heart pieces. I know, my hair is nice. I like it. I took the good selfies earlier. My webcam needs to be a little bit brighter, though. Wait, I'm going to fix that, actually, if I can. Actually, does my... Maybe my webcam's fine. I just feel like, nah, whatever, I'll just leave it, I'll just leave it, fuck it, whatever. I'm not streaming at 60 FPS, but it looks like my webcam is a very smooth 30 right now. For some reason it looks really smooth to me. It's 30 FPS though. What are you talking about, Rolfi? The selfies are on Twitter.
Breath of the Wild is huge. It's massive. It's like... <laughs> they had a huge team of people working on it. For a long time, too. It's been... When was Skyward Sword? 2010? It's 2017! It's the largest team Nintendo's ever put together. It's a ridiculous game. It's fucking massive. I do have a Patreon, it's below. The game's gonna be really dope, BLT, but some people are gonna like try to shit talk it because it's gonna be so popular. But it's truly just gonna be very good. I mean, I haven't played it. <laughs> I haven't played it, but. I have complete faith in the game. I have total faith in it. I did see that, Danny. I saw that. You can link it if you want to, though. There's so much we don't know on this map. Alright, let's check out the plateau. It literally just says treasure chest. It doesn't say what's in the chest, or did they not know? Oh, they didn't label what's in the chest. That's a shame. The Koroks in the forest. They use the same image for enemy base everywhere. This is still so early, like... Are all the shrines the same image too? Oh no, it's... or wait, hold on. No, they have actual pictures of the shrines.
Uh, I don't know, Zach. I might get the lesser ending first. Did you pre-order a solar flare? Because it might be harder to get one now. Yeah, the switch isn't super spectacular. It's just Zelda's going to be so spectacular. And the switch might be good later when there's like more stuff, but there's there okay, there are a lot of things kind of in work in the works for the switch though. Yeah, Danny, something like this would be very good once it's all filled out. Apparently that that guide, that guide is going to be insane to have a copy of right away. Do you know what I mean? Like that guide Wait, what is this Safula Hill thing? Saf it's like outside the map. There are rumors of the royal family's white horse grazing on Safula Hill. What is that? Where did that piece of information come from? The guide will ruin exploration. Well, not if you don't have a copy of it. But I mean, the information is going to go online really quickly, though. Yeah, I got the Master Edition, and I'm pretty pumped about it. I'm sleepy. I don't know why. Um, I don't know. It's just sometimes I swear and sometimes talk about certain things that are more adults. I think I need to go to the bathroom, maybe. Cutie anime girl is so jealous of me. It's fucking sad.
I still feel like I need to go, but I just can't, like, it's just like a bit at a time, it's fucking gross. Anyway, I've been streaming for about five hours. Do you think I should like peace out for a while? We could maybe watch an MST run later. I kind of just like, it's been like five hours. And I don't know what I would do though if I end the stream. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, generally, I'd go out and get some food, but, like, I'm dealing with this digestive problem, so... Yeah, working on my game, that's something. God, it sucks. It's like I want to eat food. But I have problems. I have no advice, Danny, but you're in it with the rest of us. We're all in this together. I'm pretty thankful that despite my health problems, I'm really thankful for like everything. I like want to go get some like pizza or something. Exactly, yeah, pizza. I mean, I could. I could, it's just... <laughs> My fucking body is terrible. I don't know. I mean, my digestive like issues. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for now, even though I have nothing to do. I could work on my game. I just like, I just want to take a break from sitting here, I guess. I want to either like lay down or get up or go outside or like, or like, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Sort of want to end the stream for now. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, I get past all these problems and then. Everything works out. <laughs> I hope.
I'll probably be back later. I don't know why I want to go. It's just, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I've been sitting here for five hours. So I have nothing to say. And I just sort of... Something else, something else. I'll give you people some entertainment because it'll auto host somebody and you can enjoy that while I'm gone and then I might come back. And if I don't come back, then tomorrow. But I don't know, we'll see what happens.